Welcome to Restoration and I believe we are all doing very well wherever we find ourselves at this moment. I'd like to say a very big thank you to my power packed sponsor, Fun Yoga. And I know that you're all really getting to understand why it's my nutritious thing in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. And I've been doing night. I wake up sometimes and I, I wake up, I sneak to the kitchen and I take one. And I don't want to take it to the room for anybody to see. So I stay in the living room when I finish. I just come and sleep like nothing has happened. That's what I've been doing. I just give myself out. I just want to say a very big thank you to Fan Yoga. I also want to say a very big thank you to La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, where we record every day. And of course, Hooch, Con, and Choco Flakes. Yas washing powder and Yas sanitary towel. And of course, my special drink. Special drink and special ice mineral water. To Nancy Black, thank you very much for my makeup. Ophelia of ABS Collection, thank you very much. A lot of people are trying to take this dress off me and I was wondering how I was going to host the show without a dress. So after this show, I have to run out because I know some people will take this dress off me. Thank you very much for the dress. And of course, to Roji, Roji studio, Hair Studio in Kokompe. I keep saying, don't go to Sakamano. It's so locked. She's now moved to Kokompe Eye Clinic. That is where you can find Roji Hair Studio. I also want to say a very big thank you to DDP. And of course, I can never say all the thank yous and not thank my studio audience and also my viewers at home. Please, let's welcome our guest for today, Ali Jara. Ali, how are you? I'm fine. I'm really excited. Eh? Mm -hmm. When I saw you, I didn't want to lose it all. You know, sometimes you meet someone and you want to scream like, yeah! I'm your big fan. Thank you. Thank you. A very big fan. I would want to ask you about your beginning where you're coming where you're coming from your parents how it was for you growing up as a child thank you i was born and bred in mamplobi oh right here yeah mamplobi and my father's name is abu Jara. my mother is aisha tukwati and i started from Mamplobi, I went to a primary, a, a preparatory school. From there, I went to ATTC for a I'm year. Nimle. Yes, for a year, due to soccer or a lot of problems, I quit to concentrate on goalkeeping. So, of all the positions on the pitch, what fascinated you about the post? Uh, I started as a football player. Which, which number were you playing? I was a defender, wow. which I wasn't too good. I have to decide to be in, in the post. There is no challenge. Oh, is Leave it? alone, yeah. Uh, in terms of goalkeeping, it's a creativity job. You, you must be creative to be before you can be a good goalkeeper. So I decided to be a goalkeeper. I think it's, then it works. As I played for Fata Babies mm -hmm. at Mamplobi, which I started from there. Due to, in 93, 89, mm -hmm. I was called to be as a coast festival, and I was the number one. From there, I was called to, to Stalis. That's how my life started. So when you had the call to Stalis, how excited were you? I was excited because by then we, we, we don't even keep with, with gloves or a football boot. We played barefooted. Mm -hmm. And so socks around that's the it. Hands. So you've been called to a national team. You have to go to a friend, borrow a boot, uh, look for a bag. Ghana must go mm -hmm. and quickly rush into camp because you've been called to the national team. And it's not easy to play it by then. Mm -hmm. You've been called to a national team. We went to national team. Who were some of your teammates at that time? Samuel Sekufo, 
Alors, c'est beaucoup d'années où tu as été amené à faire un cours. And I think was Tony Buffo in that group. No, Tony, oh, Tony was not in that yeah. group. So were, were you not intimidated by all these guys? Because I'm sure some of them were coming from some clubs outside Ghana to come and play, or some of them were very established within Ghana. Then they just call you from Mampubi mm -hmm. and put you amongst these people. Mm -hmm. Were you not intimidated? Not at all, not at all. Uh, in terms of uh, football, big names don't play football. I went to the national camp from Kosa. I met over 11 goalkeepers. We have 15 in number, over nine goalkeepers from Premier. Uh, the others, I was the only course goalkeeper. And we, uh, we, I was the uh, third chosen one to mm -hmm. pick. Beno, uh, Prosper, and me. They are from Premier. I was the only course goalkeeper to join them. Wow. So what was your first national assignment? Uh, we were, the national assignment was to play against Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. which I wasn't in post. I was on bench. Mm -hmm. Beno was in post, but I was shaving because of the capacity. <laughs> you were not there, you were shaving. <laughs> I sure would have scored you 100. <laughs> We went to Celerone and it was raining oh. throughout the 90 minutes and even I was behind first from course which I have not seen 20,000 capacity. Mm -hmm. Watching football, chanting and hooting, not at all. I was shivering. If I were to be me putting in post, what would I do? Mm -hmm. That's what I asked myself. So whilst everybody was busy watching football, you were yes. watching... Bria and Co was running around, mm -hmm. but I was Just sitting seated. and Beno got injured and I was told, Afrani was told, hey, go and warm up. I was started warming up, watching the crowd shivering. But <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, me standing there. <laughs> But when it's reached your turn and you are in the pose, you will not be nervous. Because before you enter the pitch, there will be the national item, mm -hmm. which you know you are serving your nation. You must perform very well. So it will motivate, uh, you. motivate you to go in there and perform and perform well. well. What were some of your memorable moments with the team? I think Ghana-Egypt qualification to play in the World Cup, which in Egypt, I stood in the polls and uh, like, the whole Egypt is playing against Alijara, not the nation. Because you must fight and fought for the nation. Because they knew you were very sharp. Yeah. So after that match, I think the, we played on Friday and the Egyptian national team was playing on Sunday, which we went and watched that match. And everybody was following me alone because of what I did, mm -hmm. it was marvelous. And I was very excited. I think the second game was against Senegal. Alaji Diof and which, song. Yeah, which we played uh, in Senegal. And the few Ghanaians who was there because of me and the performance, everybody was singing, forgotten about, we are not playing for Hasselfo, but it's the <laughs> nation. And I rise, I rose, I rose at the, at the stadium, the mm -hmm. few Ghanaians over there. So it, it, it's wonderful to be, to serve the nation mm -hmm. and serve it all. Talking about all these moments, were there times you felt you didn't give your best to your nation? Uh, I will say I am blessed and God knew I would play soccer for a very short time. So he gave me what is 
have to give me. Mm -hmm. Because I was fortunate to play in three World Cups, mm -hmm. which... But you played very well. Oh, yeah. Very well. And even foreign commentators loved you. Like every time a ball was coming to you, it was just lovely. You sit back at home and you're proud you're Ghanaian. You made us all proud. You did. Then, after the third World Cup, you were quiet. We didn't hear anything from you. We were not seeing you. People were speculating a lot of things. What really happened? Uh, immediately after Japan 93, mm -hmm. I think October, which I was about to travel to Germany, which I had a contract to play in FC Cologne. I started preparing a few days. I felt back pain, sharp pain behind my spine. A few days to your departure? Yeah. I was admitted at Kolibu Hospital the medical floor, three days, no, yes, from three days, I wake up in a dawn, shower, came back to bed. I got up around eight, nine o'clock. From my waist coming down was numb. I couldn't do anything, I can't raise my leg. So my brother came to me and then I said, ah, Look, I could not raise my you, leg. Because you woke up at dawn mm. to go to the Shower, bathroom. Yeah. I couldn't do anything. All my legs are very numb. And he told me, oh, raise your leg and let me see. I was forcing myself. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. Before, I, I didn't even know anything about paralysis. So it was the doctor who came to me and told me, you've paralyzed. I said, what? what? How come? So I was flown to the United Kingdom for one and a half year and I came back. I'm still struggling to get whatever God has given me back. But I think... So who, who funded that trip to the United Kingdom? It's the government. And since you came back from that one year, have they still been in like in strict touch with you to make sure that you're still getting whatever you have to get, you're getting the right medical examinations and everything because yes, you're working, but like you said, it's not very firm yet. Uh, in Ghana, when you are doing something and doing it well, everybody follows you. But as soon as you finish your career, let me put it like that, then nobody remembered you. I so you. Uh, I have to go to review each and every year because of the state of mm -hmm. the sickness, because nobody knew what happens to me. Mm -hmm. They related it to Guerin-Barre syndrome, which has happened to someone for 50 years ago. It's Which an one is Italian. That? Which one is Gering? <laughs> Gerimbari. Gerimbari. Yeah, that's the uh, name it. of what happens. But they traced everything which they couldn't find mm -hmm. what happens to me. And I was young by then. Mm -hmm. So, but in life, you must accept whatever comes your way. Okay. And a fight to whatever comes your way, which has happened to you, Already. which it will help you to see what you have to do in the near future. I'm most grateful to the Almighty. Now, maybe if I was playing football to date, I wouldn't have known my state to mm -hmm. date. But now, God willing, I've been able to form a goalkeeper's academy. Beautiful. 
beautiful. Which I have 360 goalkeepers oh, currently. Amazing. And that 360 goalkeepers is for free. You don't charge them? Nah, it's for free. I, I will not say call too many names. But Fata Odaudu is in the blasters. Yeah. Foli Dade is with the local blasters. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Sai is with the under 20. Mm -hmm. Patricia Mante is with the blasters. If I'm calling, I, I will can Be call over 30 goalkeepers who are with the premiership. From. No, who has been through my academy, academy. through that channel, to the top. No. So you did not allow your condition to let your talent die. Yeah. You, you are impacting it. Yes. People don't impact easily. No. What and made you decide I am, to do it? Also with persons with disability, which is the National Amputees, the Black Challenge, mm -hmm. which I tell my story to them, for them to come out from the streets. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, Ghana has been the only country who has been in the, I've taken them to three World Cups. Ghana has been the only country who has been to the quarter final three times. I've been able to help nine of uh, the amputees to play in Turkey now. Um, do, you, do you get support from the Ministry of Sports with all these things you're doing? I think the amputees, it's for the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, but the goalkeepers academy, I'm, uh, I'm giving society back what society has given me. You. Restoration. First time you were, the first time you were told you couldn't play again, what went through your mind? It wasn't easy because as a young player who has traveled throughout the world, who thought everything is going on well for him and such incident happens to him. I do cry each and every day. Every day because I ask myself what is going on in my life. Is Why God me? not being fair to you? Why me? That's what I said to myself. Why me? Because everything went on so smoothly for me, mm -hmm. so smoothly. But it has strengthened me. Uh, when something happens to you in Ghana, people thought you are useless. useless. Those you started with, those you are with, will neglect you mm -hmm. because they feel you have nothing to, to offer. offer them. So what would you do? I will not sit down and cry and cry. Mm -hmm. I must fight for my life. So that's what I'm doing. So at that time, what were the concerns of your teammates? Were they coming to visit? Were they contributing to support your medicals? What did they do? Uh, let me come to, I will not talk much about teammates because it is individuals. Mm -hmm. When someone wants to give you something, mm -hmm. it comes to, uh, from the fellow's heart. heart. I think I can't say my colleagues don't doesn't care about, about me. You. If I say so, then yeah. But 
I will not say much because it's, it's, it's been 22 years. Yes. But uh, let me go straight to maybe the club the I played. People. I played for Accra as of work. I played very well. I was the only goalkeeper in Ghana and the only player in Ghana now who has been able to swap all the awards in the nation by then. 2001-2002 season, I was the best player, Swag, most exciting player, football prospect. If I'm even injured, House of Oak will inject me and play. But I'm not talking about... with this story? I'm not talking about me alone, but it has happened to a lot of players. Charles Taylor was I'm here and said the same thing. House of Oak as an example, mm -hmm. because that's the club we love. That's where we started from. Mm -hmm. I played for Axe of I coached Axe of Oak goalkeepers. I was slammed by Axe of Oak. Go and sit down, we'll pay you because you can't kick. Just like that. That's it. They did not even ask, oh, so how can we help for you to get back on your feet? And since I came off House of Oak as a goalkeeper's coach, no goalkeeper's coach has been there, which one single goalkeeper wants a best goal player. But I was there. Lord Quarte won it for six, seven times. Sunny, four times. Sami Aji, three times. Ebenida was in his peak. I don't get it. Yes, because... You, you are not the one to kick. You are supposed to direct them. Uh, if someone wants to tell you something in your face, he will use certain terms yeah. to tell you. But I'm most grateful to the Almighty. He has taken you. care of me. I'm always happy. That's very unfortunate. You just don't use people and trash them like they are nothing. <laughs> Let me get on a lighter side a little. <laughs> people said, when you are in posts and sometimes you're trying to catch the ball, the ball can come and sometimes it turns into a tiger head. Sometimes it turns into a big pot. Is it true? Nah, I've never you, seen You've never it. seen it? <laughs> it's true. They say that that is why the keeper just dodged the thing because the tiger head was coming. <laughs> what I can say is, at first, we have bulky players who can play short in a good direction. Mm -hmm. So I can say maybe... And you experience some of those shots. <laughs> the shots which is coming is too tender, so mm -hmm. you must dodge and say there is a time. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, <they're> <laughs> <laughs> that, one is, that one is chia. <laughs> but do you really believe the report of the doctors? or you're suspicious that it could be some sort of juju? In my life, whatever comes my way, I accept it. That's why I've been able to live to date because a lot of circulations. And you could see personally right from your eye. Mm -hmm. Maybe in Ghana, I was taking 25 drugs a day. Yes, because every doctor who comes my way tells what to do. The uh, needles I took every day has damaged my nerves to date. I went to Cromwell Hospital, which they couldn't diagnose whatever. And uh, every doctor, you know, the European speaks the truth. How can such sickness happen to you? It should have happened to someone who is 80 and you being a sportsman. How come? Mm -hmm, because so, you're very athletic. And people always say footballers like medicine. I was accused by following someone's wife. Don't pay my malam, everything. Oh, they said? A lot of. But did you have a malam? Uh, if I say something, maybe I might be lying. Whenever maybe 
you meet a colleague mm -hmm. whom I played with, maybe you must, mm -hmm. you, you are interviewed a fellow. Ask the fellow about Ali Jara. Maybe he can tell you something about me mm -hmm. which will be more truthful. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe in every, that thing. I believe in prayer. And prayer has been the key. For, for someone who believes so much in prayer, did you feel God had let you down? No. I thought, I, 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 I accept the challenge which has come my own way. Just like Job. Yeah. It's a challenge. Uh, when talking a story about Ali Jara, we can go on and go on, which is pure reality, mm -hmm. not twisting something. I was neglected by family oh, due so to what to happens to me. My small portion of land I started building, AMA went and uh, demolished it. Uh, which nobody comes out and talk about it. Maybe people you love most, mm -hmm. which you thought they will be coming your way, having even just to talk will, to they you, will to even see you, you and start laughing at you. They laugh. Yes, uh, a lot of things. But you see, when you believe in God. Therefore, you have to serve the Almighty. You are the fellow which comes with challenges mm -hmm. each and every day. And it takes miracle on your way. Mm -hmm. My life is becomes a lesson to me mm -hmm. and miracle in my way each and every time. So I'm most grateful to the Almighty because I'm changing people's life. life. And Each it's and going to every day, millions of people, people from this. You will not believe it that when someone paralyzes and he goes to Kolebu and there is no treatment, they direct those people to me. Wow. A lot of people. So that I start cancelling them. Yeah, because majority of the, the time way I've logical. been through, I'll tell you the signs which you see mm -hmm. shows you are getting better mm -hmm. and better. So we have a lot of players who has played to the top. They they've not find what to do now. Mm -hmm. But I'm most grateful to the Almighty. So how long were you paralyzed? I think for a year and a half, but now it has been 22 years. October 24th marks 22nd year. How did you begin to walk again? Oh, I, uh, I came down using wheelchair and crutches, which I can support myself with, mm -hmm. taking two steps. I started moving from the northern region for a local treatment each and every time. I can't sit so long, so I go through by air. I buy then the air link. Mm -hmm. One day I was going to Tamale and I said to myself, I stopped using the crutches. So I left the crutches behind her and I went alone. And I came back and I started walking. That's all. So the inner voice, how we take that inner voice for granted, eh? And we keep praying and praying and praying. Just that inner voice. I mean, I still can't get my head around it. You see, I went to Tamale from uh, Were Tamale. Were you not worried at a point that, what if I get to Tamale and I can't walk again? No, I was wobbling when walking. <laughs> But you see, I said to myself, nobody knew me in Tamale. Mm -hmm. If I fall, and I'm very lucky, whenever I'm falling, I fall in front because of I'm a goalkeeper. So <laughs> I just went. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, so I gathered that spirit. 
went to Tamale, from Tamale to Boliga, Boliga to uh, Tumo, to Kong, where I started the treatment. I gradually, that's what I did. And I started moving around. I came back to Accra and that's it. I never used I'm the I'm sure purchase. people were shocked they when were. they saw you walk. People in being in where I stayed, Working with our crutches, they were even shocked. Isn't our God an awesome God? Yes. I mean, to have such faith, to hear your inner voice and follow. Because sometimes you hear it and you don't obey. What pushed you to obey? No, I personally. So did. If I wake up in the morning, whatever I hear from me, that's what I will do. If I don't, if I accept it and sit, whatever tells me not to do, I can see it. I will feel and mm -hmm. see it. Then I got to realize that this, this is, is no good. When you are in this world and you accept the Almighty, and you know whatever you do, it's God and God alone. You are not afraid of anything. It touched me so much. It really touched me with what you just said. It's, it's only God, really. Without him, we are nothing at all. So now your family, how are they? treating you? Have they come back? Um, are they apologetic about what happened? Uh, I've moved away. Um, I have started life. I have a wife with two children, two boys. I have to think about my children and uh, let them go reach to the height I want them to it. The mistakes I've done in past, I will never let my child to do this, that mistake. Mm -hmm. Mine is to push them to the highest level, mm -hmm. then I've given them life. Yeah. That's what I'm and praying for. Fulfilled. That's what I'm praying for and that's what I'm doing. I don't think about, you know, whatever comes my way, it's a lesson to me and it strengthens me. So. I don't think about the past, but the past gave me the strength to see the future. future. Very true. So during that time, were you married? I'm not by then. After that, before I got married. Wow. And I think I must be sincere and grateful to the lady I married. Because she has stood behind me very, very well. Let's give it up for this one. What's her name? Mariama. Mariama Jara. Oh, Mariama. Auntie Mariama, God bless you so much for all that you keep doing for our brother. We really, really appreciate you. Our love goes out to you and the kids at home. <laughs> now, all the girls, they want Ferrari. Mm -hmm. They want designer. <laughs> they want Bugatti. But for a woman to still see your lows, and still support you. She's an amazing woman. And to when you don't have sound mind mm -hmm. at home, you will die. Restoration. Financially, I know traveling for treatment, if you are in London, you're paying pounds. It's, it, it took a lot of money. How did it affect you when you came back? I have been to Cromwell for two times, which even an hour of my treatment takes 150,000 uh, hey. pounds. Uh, pounds. 100 150 pounds. And an hour. An hour. And so if you, if you are doing for, five for, hours, mm. must for one more. 150 by 5. Hey. I'm waiting. 
Is it? Eh. Encrofa ya what? Ninjo bi ndi. Is that where you na your man send you? Seven hundred and fifty pounds. Mm. One day. Mm. No, it's a day, five hours. So if so if every day he has to do five hours. Seven fifty by five states. And and 3,750 The bigger pounds. problem, which it's, I don't know whether the sickness affects my kidney. I have only one kidney. So, uh, let me say, when maybe you come out and talk, Ghanaians uh, bounce back at you, but uh, that's it. And uh, people thought I I played for House of Oak, which I've been signed for three cities. I've been paid three cities a day by then. By then. And uh, fifteen Ghana cities was my signing on fee. Which 15 Ghana cities will be now maybe three, 300 Ghana. Mm -hmm. And people thought maybe when you come out and talk about certain things which uh, people related to maybe some players who played to the highest level mm -hmm. who had money mm -hmm. and something happened, so they compare you to certain people. Mm -hmm. But no. My sister, if I got paralyzed at the age of 17, what did the nation want me to do after? after. That, that is my concern. Then who, people who knows whether out. you had a strain from all those stretching in the pole? I mean, you can never tell. But we are in the system where nobody cares. But I'm happy and thank, grateful to the Almighty. He will never carry me with a load which cannot be me cry. Sorry, but some of these things, when you kill yourself so much, I have to shoot. When you kill yourself so much to build something and you have an accident along the way, and the same people you are dying for just neglect you like you don't exist. It's painful. It's so painful. If he did not motivate himself by listening to that voice, he could have still been walking with the clutches and the wheelchair. And everybody is living like nothing is OK. We are always talking about politics. When issues that concern the nation are lying there. And I'm sure you are not the only victim. It has happened to a lot of people. I, I heard one man who said his money was taken. He went for a boxing bout. They took his money as a loan. If you take a loan, you pay with interest. And now he keeps writing to every government and they don't want to talk about it. Where are the lawyers of this nation? We need human rights lawyers who are firm, who are not money conscious, who will say it as it is. Seriously, who does that? They want to talk about pink sheets. I mean, um, seriously, we, I, I'm, I'm, I am not a big fan of politics. Because I believe that whoever comes, I will still eat. Mm -hmm. 
my children and I, it does not affect me and my family in any way. So I just concentrate and do what I can do to better my life. But when you use and abuse people and live like it is all right, yes, it's 22 years, but it is still not all right. It is still not all right. The Ministry of Sports should sit up and make sure the right thing is done. 22 years is not too late. If he had a child at that time, should have been 22 years getting ready to be married. It's not too late. A whole 22 years of his life almost became wasted. A day. We are being political. But it's, it's not right. It's wrong. It's just wrong. Young man, 17 years. He could have just, when he had a call, he could have just decided not to go. He would say, I'll stay at my ATTC and maybe become an organizer, become something. And he would be earning his money, though not as much as you thought you were giving him. He would still have his legs working. It, it's sad. It's sad. So sad. I think we have to sit up as a nation. Neymar and who here, things that are not important are what sometimes we give energy to. These are things we should give energy to. <sighs> I just want to ask you this. Now, you seem to be very, uh, sorry I'm getting very emotional about this. You seem to be very forgiving about everything and it's good. It heals you. If you had the chance to play for hearts again, would you do it? I don't think if I had a chance to play, you know, by then I, I can't say much because we are novice. And mm -hmm. um, mistakes we've done through the past, I will never do that mistake no. today. But to forgive someone, it's the divine almighty, not me. Because I've never slept with anybody before. I will never think about you. Today is gone. Tomorrow is coming. So I must think about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I do pray for everybody. And wish them because well. each and every day of my life becomes a lesson. Each and every day I must pray to, for my health to be stronger and stronger and stronger because I can do whatever any normal being can do, can do if the Almighty give me that strength. So uh, what I'm most grateful to and I have to pray each and every day to Ghana National Fire Service. Ghana National Fire Service picked me. I am with the service. They, they are each and every day when I go to work, they've given me a new life. So I'm most grateful. Alibi, before I let you go, I know it's been a lot. Now you have all these goalkeepers, you are helping. I'm giving you my word on this show, until you, you have my word on this. We're going to support you with all the things you need to help the kids become better goalkeepers. If it's footballs, if it's shin guards, whatever you need, we are going to support you with those things. So, so you can train the kids. You've given me so much hope. Seriously, I have hope. But what you've just said, my hope just went to 600%. Aside that, we have a partner, which is Acacia Medical Center at East Ligon. They are a new, ultra-modern, state-of-the-art medical center. So I spoke to them about your condition, and Dr. Amu has assured us that as you have not been able to travel, you could come there and they would run periodic checks. They have a narrow person, they have everybody. And the good thing about Acacia is everybody there is a specialist. So you don't have a problem. 
okay? And I know with time, we will still work to see if you have to go back to the UK, if we can talk to people who can support us so we can raise something for you to go back and see how far you, you. My, my words are not even coming. Bali, God bless you so much. And bless okay. you too. Never give up. There is always light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how long it is. When you come out, it's bright. God bless you so much. But before you leave, I have some presents from our sponsors for you. Um, Fan Yoga is one of our sponsors. They are actually our main sponsor. And being a sportsman, you need a lot of nutrition. So we first have hooch corn and choco flakes. And I'm assuring you, I'm going to come to one of your sessions and I'm bringing the kids hooch corn flakes and hooch exercise books. Thanks I just so come much. and spend a whole day with you and see how you and the kids do your thing. I'm really, really proud of you. Then we also have Yas product here. We have washing powder. We have everything that the family can use. So when you go home, kindly give it to Madam for us and tell her God bless her. And this one is your fun yoga. Time. It's actually a lot more, but I couldn't carry all of it on the <laughs> stage. <laughs> so let me just help you. Yeah. So once we get off the stage, you can get the rest. I'm most grateful. You're welcome. You're welcome so much. I, 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 I get teary so much on this show, but today's was like uncontrollable. In life, you have to treat everybody like the person is your brother or your sister. Today might be awesome for you. You never know the story tomorrow. The clock can just take a turn and it will shock you. And by that time, it will be too late for you. Always do remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Shining through, and it's just for you. There is hope for the tired and weary. Open your eyes, and you will see the perfect friend in me. Yourself free and take.